years ago, I remember seeing a video of a meteor that streaked across the sky over Argentina late at night. It was captured on several video feeds that were recording at that time. And what was amazing to see is as the meteor blazed across the sky, for a brief instant, everything lit up like day. In the middle of the night, you could see perfectly all the colors, everything that was there. And then when the light passed, it was dark again. But for that moment when the light came, everything was illuminated. We're here continuing our journey in these midweek devotions, midweek in the Word, looking at the book of Ephesians. And we're in Ephesians chapter 5, looking specifically today at verse 13 and 14. But we're going to begin reading back at verse 8 just to get a little bit of running head start into these verses. We're looking at the new life we have in Christ, called to walk as children of light. That's what Paul's been teaching us. And bearing the fruit of light, discerning what pleases to the Lord, exposing the works of darkness. And we're going to look at what that means to expose the work of darkness, both this week and next week, looking at verses 13 and 14. So here is the the word of the Lord, beginning in chapter 5, verse 8. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them, for it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. This is the word of the Lord. The main point that I want you to see is that the light exposes the darkness. And the one, the one element I want us to just, just meditate on is how does that work? How does the light expose the darkness? We see this in verse 13 and 14. When anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Well, in reality, we understand this physically. I turned on the light when I walked into this room, and what was darkened became light. Everything is now visible. The meteor that streamed across the sky over Argentina years ago made everything light for that moment that it was there. It illuminated everything. We understand this physically, but what Paul is telling us is that the light exposes the the darkness in a spiritual reality. People are born in darkness. We all once were darkness. We lived and walked and were darkness. What that means is that we all were bound in sin. As he says in chapter 2, we are dead in our trespasses and sins. We have some idea of right and wrong by nature, but that idea is warped and insufficient alone for salvation. As Paul teaches us in Romans chapter 1, we have the witness of both creation and conscience. We are made in the image of God. We are surrounded by the creation of God. We know that God exists, but it's not enough to lead us to a knowledge of Him. The light, the light that we all desperately need is the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And and I want you to follow the progression for how this is described in the New Testament. First, we realize that God is light. We could see this all the way back in Genesis, but if we look at 1 John 1, verse 5, we read this. This is the message we have heard and from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. We see at the end of the Bible, in the book of Revelation, there is no night in the new heavenly city, the new Jerusalem, because God is there and he is the light of the city. We take it a step further. John chapter 1, verses 4 and 5, we see that Jesus, God himself, is the light come into the world. John chapter 1, verse 4 and 5, In him, that's speaking of Christ, was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. 
Paul takes it a step further for us when he is standing before, before Agrippa, giving a defense and a testimony of his calling by God, sharing that he was called to go and take this message of Christ to the Gentiles. For what purpose? Acts chapter 26, verse 18, to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith. You see, what we have going on here is Paul is saying, while God is light, Jesus is light in the world, the message of the gospel is light. We turn from darkness to light. We turn from sin to the gospel and believing, repenting of sin, receiving forgiveness through the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We also see him ex expound upon this in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 4 and 6. He's speaking of those who are, who are lost in their sins. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Verse 6, For God said, for God who said, let light shine out of darkness has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So the face of Jesus Christ is the, the message of the gospel, the glory of God that is conveyed as we proclaim Christ, the message of the gospel, light shines because it is the light that has come into the world, shining into the darkness. And that light is from God himself because God is light. But it doesn't stop there. The progression continues because we read as Jesus himself declared to us in Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 and 16, we are the light of the world. He said, you are the light of the world. A city set on the hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light in all the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. How is it that we can be light in the world if God himself and the gospel is light? Well, Jesus himself declares in John chapter 8, verse 12, again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. When we come to faith in Christ, we receive the light of life and that light shines now in the darkness of this world. God is light. Christ has come bringing that light to the earth. The gospel is the light, the glory of God shining forth. God is, Jesus is the light of the world, and those who trust in him receive the light of life. It is put within them. And we who are believing in Christ are now the light of the world. This light of the gospel, the light of Christ, shines through you, Christian. And it shines, as he says here in verse 9, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. So how does this light shine through you? Well, first it shines in your actions. The light of the gospel shines through your new priorities in what you do and your acts of kindness and love and self-sacrifice. If we were to take apart Matthew chapter 5, where Jesus is, is describing that you are the light of the world, he goes on to say that they will see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. So the light of the world, when it comes to you displaying that, comes out in your actions, in what you do. Do your actions display the light of the gospel today? Are your actions a reflection of what Christ has done inside of your heart and your life? Jesus said, you'll know a tree by its fruits. What is your fruit saying about your life? Secondly, this light shines through you. The light of the gospel, the light of Christ shines through you, Christian, through your faith. It shines through your steadfast trust in our God on days that are both good and bad. The light of the gospel radiates through the faithful testimony of your faith, especially 
in times of hardship and suffering. We have to wrap our minds around this because when days are easy, when life is simple, the light of faith does not glow as bright. But when the hopes of this world, the comforts and the confidences, the securities of this world are put to the test or eliminated altogether, the light of faith shines most brilliantly. The value of gold is revealed through the purifying process of fire. The beauty of the sculpture is progressively displayed more and more through the hammer and the chisel. And your faith is seen most brilliantly as you endure suffering and trials, holding fast to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thirdly, this light is seen in your life through your words. It shines through your speech in what you say and how you say it. How you speak matters. Are your words characterized by the grace and truth and love that you have been shown in Jesus? Does your, do your words fit the description given here again in verse 9? The fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. How you speak matters, but also what you speak matters. What you speak matters, for there is salvation nowhere else other than in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So while we talk about many good things and many true things, eventually we must get to Jesus, His cross, and His resurrection. Your life and words both display the gospel. Think of it like the wings of a plane. One wing is your actions, your life, the way that you carry about how you, how you live. The other wing is your words, how you speak and what you speak about. And the fuselage is your faith that informs both your actions and your words. If you lose any part of that airplane, it's a disaster. Light shines through all working together. Christian, do you realize you have the privilege in Christ to shine forth His light to the world? This is a glorious privilege. You, you know, if you, if you look at kids as they grow older and taller, when they get to where they can reach the light switch, it's a big deal. Because suddenly, you're going to find all the lights on in the entirety of the house because they can reach it. They can turn it on. Everywhere they go, I can reach the switch. I can hit the switch. Brothers and sisters, the king has tapped you on the shoulder and said, go flip that switch so they can see the light. You have been given this grand privilege to shine as lights in the world. So is your life displaying that light today? Are your words speaking the light? You have been called to expose the works of darkness. So let us with joy shine forth the light of the gospel.